Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan here with Hands Down DFS, and we're going to be recapping the Week 2 DraftKings main slate and reviewing our lineup we had submitted. Uh, before we get into our lineup picks, which, you know, we had a fairly fairly decent lineup, uh, much better than Week 1 at 100% ROI, so can't complain about that, back to break even on the season. But before we get into our exact lineup, uh, just take a look at, you know, how everyone did as a whole, how the whole slate did uh, up top. Derrick Henry, monster game, just vintage Derrick Henry, uh, not not even vintage, just the Derrick Henry we know and love, three touchdowns, almost 200 yards on the ground, it was just a massive game from him, uh, 6% on was very low, I know when I saw that ownership was going to be low on him, I was I was very high on him, so that worked out for me, uh, Cooper Cup, pretty chalky, but with 40 points, you know, he, you'll eat that chalk, we had him in our lineup, I uh, mentioned how... The Colts defense is solid against the run, so thought Stafford and the Rams would be going to the air a lot. So I had a decent chunk of Cooper Cup, and that worked out for us. So then, you know, so some of the chalkier QBs, Kyler Murray and Tom Brady, uh, we, we expect them to do good every week. Two guys we probably should have considered more than we did. We went, went a little bit more value in our lineup. But, you know, Cortland Sutton we're going to talk about later. But, that again, with the Broncos stack, could have had him in there. We talked about Rondale Moore a lot, how... Christian Kirk, you know, came out as the highest scoring receiver on that Cardinals team in week one. But those two touchdowns were not a fluke. I mean, he found the end zone twice. That's no fluke. But he was only targeted five times, caught four of them for two touchdowns. So people probably looked at him as the wide receiver, too, on this team. But when you look at the target share and the uh, snap percentage, it was really Rondale Moore that is the true wide receiver, too. You can even make an argument that A.J. Green should maybe be above Kirk. He caught a touchdown this week. So, uh Plus, Hopkins was going up against Patrick Peterson. Tough matchup. Rondé Moore made sense looking back at it. Uh, should have had a lot more of him. I know we, we did talk about him, but probably should have been had a lot more exposure to him. And then we look kind of at these lower-owned plays. Tony Pollard and, and Henry Ruggs, both surprise games. Uh, I mean, the Raiders as a whole were a surprise, and we'll talk about that. As you see, we had the Steelers' defense, but I guess Derek Carr and the Raiders might be, might be a threat this year, so we probably... Even without Josh Jacobs. So, you know, probably don't want to be playing defenses against them going forward. And then when we look at just, you know, who who is the chalk, who'd everyone play, uh, keep in mind this was a single entry GPP I pulled this contest information from. Uh will vary obviously if you're playing cash or at, you know, a hundred fifty entry GPP. But I uh, you know, well, last week, week one, we saw a lot of the chalk bust. Uh less than ten points for most of them. This week it was just kind of average. Uh, Keenan Allen, 18 points. Najee Harris, we had 19 points. C.D. Lamb, 17, uh, 13 in this range. Uh, obviously, Cooper Cup's the exception here at 40 points. But just just an average game from the chalk. They didn't kill you. They didn't didn't break the slate. Uh, probably didn't go wrong there. Uh, and then when we look at the highest value guys, talked about Rondale Moore. We'll ignore defenses. Cooper Cup even at 6,000, great value. And then look at all this low ownership right here. You know, there were, KJ Osborne, we talked about a bit, but at 2%, that's actually higher on than I was expecting him. 20 points, great value. Henry Ruggs, we just talked about. Pittman, once the news that uh, Paris Campbell wasn't playing, so they're down there, you know, two of their top four receivers. Pittman and pa Pascal became great plays uh, at 0.35% owned, 4,300. I mean, this was great value. Again, we're going to talk about Cortland Sutton. So there, there was tons of, very low owned value. If you somehow found Max Williams, props to you. Twenty seven hundred dollars, sixteen points, not too shabby. Uh, Freddie Swain again, basically zero percent owned, twenty one points, caught a long touchdown. Uh, so that's kind of how the slate did as a whole. Looking over to our lineup, we went with the Broncos stack. Had Teddy Bridgewater, Tim Patrick, Noah Fant. Uh, liked the value slash mid tier running backs with the two Harrises. Um, you know, Seattle was due for a high scoring game as they are every week. We roll with Metcalf. And then with the Colts' great run defense, we figured Stafford would be going into the air a lot. So, Cup, you know, makes sense. We talked about that already. And then if you watch the Bucks Falcons game, Calvin Ridley, I mean, both the Calvin Ridley and the Falcons as a whole should have had more points than they had. I mean, that was probably the closest. 23 point game that I've seen. I mean, it was a one score game with like five minutes left and two, two unfortunate pick sixes for Matt Ryan at the end kind of destroyed, destroyed, uh, you know, Calvin Ridley's ceiling, but still 19 
points. Not too bad. Steelers, we talked about. Guess we're not playing defense against the Raiders, but I mean, not a bad lineup. 155 points, so min cashed. Could have been could have been a lot better if you watch our full slate breakdown. We had a lot of lot of 50-50 plays, and you know this was a great lineup. Even getting those wrong, but one of the first plays was we were just debating DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett, and I'll take the blame on this one. Scotty wanted to roll back with Tyler Lockett after a big week one. He said I like like him again in week two because I think he'll have lower ownership and you know still has that ceiling. And I was like, man, but DK Metcalf, he's just an animal. But I, so we roll with Metcalf, but if we put Tyler Lockett here, you know, boom, we're, we're already at five X, five X cash, um, on this lineup. And then again, we would have $400 to spare. Then another 50, 50 we had was we, we liked fan. We both liked fan. And then it was Tim Patrick or Cortland Sutton. And we both liked Patrick a little bit more, uh, but you know, Cortland Sutton was there and was a good play. And I, I said, both are going to be good plays. And I think they're both going to return equal value. Tim Patrick found the end zone, got them in the 13 points, but really Cortland Sutton carried the bulk of that work. So, you know, you put Sutton in there, uh, obviously that's now we're $200 over the salary limit. So, uh, you know, find somewhere to bring that down. Probably the defense. Do we need to spend $3,000 on the defense? Honestly, we could have just put the jets in there at, almost minimum price and been fine. But I know a defense I talked about liking was the, the bears against uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, Scotty talked me out of them. So we roll with the Steelers, but say we do have the bears in there and there we go. We're at 50,210.82 points. I mean, we're more than 20 Xing our return. So overall, even, even with these two, I, I'm not going to call them misses. They were fine plays. They they were very average play, plays, but they didn't kind of live up to our expectations. So even with these two misses at running back, if we just, you know, the the 50-50 we had between Lockett and Metcalf, the 50-50 between Sutton and uh, Tim Patrick, you change those and all of a sudden we're talking about a lineup that's potentially giving you 20 to 25x, whatever your entry fee was. So really happy with how this lineup did. Really excited going into week three, hoping to keep the momentum. So thank you guys for watching. Follow along for all our week three content coming out soon. And again, hopefully we can just continue the momentum in the week three. Please subscribe, like this video, let us know if you have any thoughts, anything we could be doing better, if you have any questions on the upcoming slate, and we'd be happy to answer them. Uh, catch you guys in the future videos.